We got breaking news in the NFL where the Los Angeles Chargers are making Derwin James the highest paid safety in NFL history. James will receive a four year extension worth just over $76 million. The 26 year old missed the start of 2019 season and all of 2020 because of injuries, but he bounced back in 2021 to make it to the Pro Bowl for a second time in his career. He's been in a hold in situation to start camp this summer as the two sides worked out to hammer out a new contract and it seems like they'll have their leader in that secondary roaming to begin 2022. I'm going to bring in our Pete Crisco and Rick Spielman here with that breaking news and guys your reaction the four year 76 and now the highest paid when it comes to Duran James in that secondary Pete your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, look, the next guy up always becomes the highest paid at any position, so it's understandable that he is the highest paid safety. There are concerns. He's been hurt a lot. But here's the other thing. The value of that position is rising in recent years. A lot of teams have realized that you can play three safeties on the field with the way the game is playing. You can take a safety and play him as a linebacker, which they do like Derwin James. They can blitz him off the edge. He can do so many things. He's good in the run game. So I understand it from that standpoint. But, boy, that's a lot of money, Rick. Yeah, but it's a lot of money today. But what is it going to look like tomorrow? It's going to be the fourth or fifth highest paid safety probably two years from now. But what he brings to that defense when he is on the field, uh, he brings physicality. Uh, they can blitz him off the edge. He can have an impact on the game. My biggest issue with him is when he's in the deep half of the field and the coverage from that standpoint. But the way defenses are evolving now to match up with all these athletes on the offensive side of the ball it's to have a guy like Derwin James that could do many different things and line up at many different positions on the defensive side. And they're a much better defense, by the way, when he is on the field. There's no question about that. We've seen that. That's played out statistically, so you can see the value of him on the field. Of course, not missing much time. He was in that hold in, as opposed to others. We've seen the hold out away from camp here. But how good is it to kind of have him there in house? They knew they were going to get a deal done. Now having him there, adding him to that group, as we've seen in the past here in the AFC West, how good is it to kind of have him here, ready to go off the jump? Well, Rick, you know, you're the one who says we don't talk about players who aren't there. Well, he was there. He just wasn't practicing. It's what we refer to as a hold in. Right. So when they're holding in, they're actually going to all the meetings. They're doing the conditioning. Uh, they're doing everything except probably practicing on the field at all. So I always prefer to hold in rather than to hold out because you have your eyes on them every day. Yeah, and you want them on the field practicing, though. I mean, look, you got to get the reps. In this league, you have to have reps. I know he, you know, this is a guy who's missed time a lot of times. So the more reps he gets, as good as he is, it's good for him. It's good for the defense. But he missed, he, he's a veteran, too. So it's not like a rookie trying to learn a defense. He's been in this scheme for a second year now. So he should understand what's going on. And I don't think it'll take him that much time no. to, uh, to catch up. Knowing that he's in place, of course, the addition of Khalil Mack this offseason and Joey Bosa on the opposite side there. What do you kind of rank this defense if we're looking at the AFC West, especially competitive as it's going to be in 2022? Well, I think the key to them is stopping the run, and they added some big bodies in the middle of that defense as well, which is key. If you stop the run, and they didn't last year, it turns those pass rushers loose. It makes everybody on the back end that much better. They gave up a ton of rushing yards. I remember looking at their stats. They were down by where your Minnesota Vikings defense was in the <laughs> rushing stats last year. So they gave up a lot of rushing yards. Yeah, they improved from the run defensive standpoint and then go out and get uh, the, the corner from New England. Yep. Uh, that was a huge sign for them as well to help on the back end. All right, we'll see how that pans out there for the Chargers. I mentioned the AFC West looking like the SEC in the NFL. Rick Spielman and Pete Prisco, appreciate your time. Hold on, fellas, we'll get to you a little bit later. The Pick 6 Podcast, always willing and dealing. It's mailbag, the latest episode. How worried should the Viking fans be about their new GM and why the 49ers trading Jimmy G and other questions as well? All you got to do is download with the Super Friends deal. Will Brinson. And- do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.